Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm considering my discussions on how the, the atmosphere above the troposphere, uh, called the stratosphere, how that has an enormous impact on what happens to our weather and climate in the troposphere. It can, changes in the upper atmosphere, in the stratosphere, can uh, be vertically coupled and cause changes in the, on the surface, changes in extreme weather events, and also changes in the lower atmosphere, in the, strat the, the troposphere, for example, with the jet stream. You know, if the jet stream, for example, passes over mountainous areas like Tibet, then it can gain a, as it goes over, as it, it gains a vertical component of, uh, you, you know, of, of, uh, of momentum, and it can go, it can, so as it moves over and comes up over the Tibetan plateau, it can be driven right up into the stratosphere, break the, the polar, the stratospheric polar vortex and cause reper, repercussions for several months afterwards um, on the surface of the earth, extreme weather events and so on. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, this is just an earth null school. And this is about three, just over three years ago. Um, this was what we, this is the after. This, so we're looking at 10 hexapascals. We're looking at the winds and we've got the temperatures here. And you can see the temperature actually above zero in this green region. Okay. Um, and this, so this is after the polar vortex was split and broken up. And we see one, two, three, at least four vortices here. And uh, the North Pole is up here in this region. So it's offset also from the, the uh, North Pole. And this is what we had um, a few months prior in, to this, to that image. Um, so this was in, um, this was about, this was almost precisely three years ago today. Okay, so, you know, we had a typical polar vortex, almost, mi almost 80, minus 80 degrees in the center here, very strong vortex and over the after the sudden stratospheric warming that transition I showed you in the previous video how that happened that transitioned into this uh, image here uh, I've got a visitor here just don't step on my keyboard okay Shackleton okay and here's where we are in 2020 December 28th so this image is very very similar to uh, come on come on come on I'm busy this image is very, very similar to what we have right now. Um, the, what we have right now, this image, is similar to what we had three years ago. And three years ago, after transitioning through the sudden stratospheric warming, we came to this sort of thing. And that had huge implications to extreme weather events on the Earth. So, you know, this is a very good paper to read. If you just Google the title, it's an EOS. Uh, how sudden stratospheric warming affects the whole atmosphere. Okay, so high above the Earth's surfaces, surface, this is in the stratosphere, the air temperatures occasionally increase suddenly, and that produces widespread effects on weather, air chemistry, and telecommunications. Telecommunications, because the ionosphere is affected, and the chemistry, because of the great warming of the upper atmosphere, there's much less uh, breakdown of, of ozone. Okay, you need very cold temperatures for the ozone to be broken down. So this is an image showing um, the summer hemisphere, winter hemisphere, um, the layers through the atmosphere, troposphere. So the average height is about ele actually 11 kilometers. Stratosphere is 10, 10 to 50 kilometers. And then above that, the mesosphere, thermosphere. And you get noctilucent clouds up here, and you get the, um, so you get the, uh, you know, this is a troposphere, but above that you get uh, rising air uh, from the troposphere into the stratosphere, carrying water vapor, the so-called Brewer-Dobson circulation here. And uh, if you go up, you get uh, different waves, uh, planetary waves, for example, uh, which, are, which are long period uh, planetary scale wavelengths. And, uh, you know, these are things like the jet streams going over uh, terrain going up into the stratosphere. And you get uh, water, CO, nitrous oxide here. And there's other things going on here, um, different circulation patterns and so on. Um, 
but there's a lot of variability up here high in the atmosphere in the stratosphere when there's this sudden stratospheric warming event okay so you know there's there's a lot of information in here i'm not going to go into all of the details here except you know these sudden stratospheric warmings they can increase the probability of record breaking cold temperatures and snowfall in eastern north america uh, they caused they can cause uh, lots of warming so in 20 uh, you know 2018 when we after that sudden stratospheric warming event a few months later we had massive snowfalls on the eastern uh, eastern u.s okay um, massive massive uh, storm trains and if we get a sudden stratospheric warming event occurring again this year, we could expect similar things. So there's chemistry effects, there's effects on space weather, effects on the Earth's thermosphere and the ionosphere, um, which we call space weather. Okay, so there's lots of different events that are occurring. Um, but let's focus on what's happening at the surface of the Earth. So after we had those of the, the sudden stratospheric warming, you know, um, 2017, 2018. Then we ended up getting, this was the sort of thing that we could see throughout the winter. So we're looking from July 2017, um, out a year. Okay, so this is the wind speed. Um, okay, and uh, what happened is suddenly the wind speed in the upper atmosphere plummets. This is the zonal wind speed. Suddenly we get, this is the temperature okay um, and so the temperature suddenly rose with the sudden stratospheric warming here the temperature suddenly shot up in the upper atmosphere spiked and the winds um, instead of being zonal around the earth they spread all over and they drop significantly here okay so this is the signature of this sudden stratospheric warming event um, these are some heat fluxes showing the fluctuation throughout that winter massive fluctuations um, when normally there is uh, much less variability here. This is a, a maximum year. This is a minimum envelope. And what you see is 45 days after the sudden stratospheric warming event, you see a warmth here over North America, you know, up in the high Arctic. You see a very cold eastern seaboard. So we had lots of storms. And you see a very, very cold Eurasia here. Okay. Um, and this is uh, what happened after, this is after a whole bunch of average sudden stratospheric warming events and the effects on surface temperatures 45 days after. And this was after the particular event in February 28, uh, 2018. So we had, you know, huge warming up here in the Arctic, very, very cold uh, Asia and Europe. And, uh, you know, a cooler, cooler parts, lower North America was cooler, and we had a lot of storms coming in on the East Coast. This is the uh, Arctic Oscillation Index. After the sudden stratospheric warming, the AO was positive, so the polar vortex was tight. And then um, there were a lot of outbreaks, uh, and then it went sharply negative. Um, so there were a lot of outbreaks of cold into North America here. Okay, so it was triggered by the sudden stratospheric warming. And this is Europe. So these are the forecasts in Europe. For, so um, these are the forecasts um, for March temperatures in Europe. So the models, when the models were run in early January, they showed ex extensive war warmth over Northern Europe. And that continued for the next model run. But then the model run in early February, you know, showed neutral here later February showed cold and then very cold. And what happened here? Why did the model switch? Because the sudden stratospheric warming occurred and completely changed what was expected in Northern Europe. And this is the March anomaly seen in Northern Europe. Very, very cold, very, very snowy. Okay, um, this is, uh, you know, again, what we can see in La Nina winters, which we had back then and, uh, you know, colder over, so this is what we could see here. This is La Nina winters without sudden stratospheric warming. Okay, so here's the warmer towards the Eurasian side, colder in North America side. When there's at least uh, one sudden stratospheric warming, that changes the pattern. 
And these are what we saw in 2017, 2018. So we saw very, very warm uh, Arctic here. So the pattern, the, the, basically what we expect from La Nina or El Nino is that changes completely uh, once we get the sudden stratospheric warming. Okay, so again, I showed you, here's where we are in 2017, here's where we were, and here's where we were a few months later after the polar vortex split, and here's where we are in 2020, and we expect that we may see a similar type event. Okay, now there's a paper here that just came out very recently, Stratospheric Drivers of Extreme Events at the Earth's Surface. And that's the paper that I want to look at in detail. So these are the atmospheric layers. I should show you some background first before we get into the uh, paper. So again, here's the, so here's the troposphere, lower level of the atmosphere, Mount Everest, cumulus, uh, cumulonimbus storm clouds. This is about 10, 11 kilometers, okay? And then the, so the temperature is higher at the surface and drops, and then it flattens out, and then it starts to rise up into the stratosphere. Stratosphere about 10 to uh, uh, 10 kilometers up to about 50 kilometers. Ozone layers here, you get these polar stratospheric clouds. Uh, weather balloons get up here. And then as we go up above that, we get to the mesosphere. There's meteors, sounding rockets, noctilucent clouds, sprites, things like that. And then the thermosphere. So the temperature falls and then it rises in the stratosphere and then it flattens and then it starts to fall again in the mesosphere. Okay, so that's how we're defining the different layers, uh, distinguishing the different layers of the atmosphere. And the upper atmosphere, um, here is the upper atmosphere, just another view of it. Um, so the troposphere, 0 to 10 miles, the stratosphere, 10 to 31 miles, and the mesosphere up higher, and then the thermosphere here, and you can see some of the sprites and things here. Okay, some very good graphics of what we're talking about with the upper atmosphere. And sudden stratospheric warming, you can get a stable polar vortex, suddenly it splits, in, in, into two, three, or four multi, uh, sub vortices, and it affects weather significantly on the surface. So here's the paper, um, open source, stratospheric drivers of extreme events at the Earth's surface. Okay, so the stratosphere is a layer um, of the atmosphere between 10 and, 50, uh, 10 and 50 kilometers. And changes in the stratosphere are important for changes in the weather and climate at the Earth's surface on timescales of weeks to decades. The stratospheric circulation evolves more slowly than that of the troposphere below, so it allows us to give, get some predictability at the surface. So when we see changes occurring in the stratosphere, we can say, aha, this is going to happen at the surface. So there's a strong coupling between the stratosphere and the troposphere um, so, the, so changes in the stratosphere contribute substantially to a wide range of climate-related extreme events like cold air outbreaks, extreme heat outbreaks, air pollution, which has to do with the stability of the, or, or of the atmosphere, um, wildfires, wind extremes and storm clusters, changes in tropical cyclones and sea ice cover. Okay, um, so a better understanding of the coupling between the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, and the stratosphere is very important to allow us to predict, help pre us predict extreme events. Okay, so there's uh, the, the stratospheric circulation. This is very important. It consists of three large-scale features. The stratospheric meridional overturning circulation. Okay, so stratospheric mock. Remember when we talk about the AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation? That's in the ocean. A similar thing happens in the upper atmosphere. We have the stratospheric meridional overturning circulation. It's also called the Brewer-Dobson circulation. That transports mass from the tropical to the extratropical stratosphere on timescales of months to years. There's something called the QBO, or the quasi-biennial oscillation. There's periodic, roughly every 28 months, descending easterly and westerly equatorial jets driven by tropical Kelvin and Rossby gravity waves. So that's another effect. And the stratospheric polar vortex. So I'll have another video and talk about these details. Thanks for listening.